the president who doesn't know who I am. Wow. He doesn't know how I feel, and I'm a different human being from the people who are is walking. Is that the way it should be? No, I'm, I'm not. Yes, that's the way it is all over the world. Otherwise, don't tell me of that nation that you know that is so wonderful, and the president they're making sure there are no armed robbers or there are no dupes or there are no criminals. The Name work the to prevent the work to prevent that from happening. Legislation implementation policies. of that less policies it that will happening. make it happen. Is it not happening here? Is it happening? Are we having? Are we not having impunity? Are we not having crime? Are we not having a number? Well, we okay, very quickly to then. We you know where this will lead us in our democracy because yeah, we're going to have a fundamental us. issue if a president does not feel accountable to me first, because then I put him there. His first duty is to be accountable to me. Whoever I am in the society or whatever kid I belong to, all right? Then when he is not doing what he is assigned to do, then I begin to ask questions. Not that I begin to write up a letter to him to do or to teach him what to do. Do you agree? I agree with you. But you. But in practice, Mr. President is not going to come here. He will not wear the police uniform to give you protection. Mr. President is not going to be in charge of Ministry of um, Water to make sure you have water. Okay. Some other human being is there. Right. Why can't that human being see himself as the president also? Okay. Uh, and deliver. Mm. Let me ask Mr. Babatunde, let's just move forward a little bit <laughs> on, on this <laughs> issue. <laughs> the national conference. A lot of people are saying the national conference is uh, a leap forward, not even a step forward. What are your there has been a clamor for many, many years that the Nigerian nation, as has existed over the years, has been lopsided. And that perhaps we need to negotiate the basis for our unity. Um, the National Conference is all about that, ostensibly. And the fact that we're actually talking, that some people are talking on our behalf, ostensibly, again, I say, because, of course, there are issues with uh, how they actually got there in the first place, the selection process or election process or whatever you want to call it. Um, there are issues with the fact that 85% uh, of the country is not represented at the national conference, and by that I mean the youths are not adequately represented. Um, there is a sense in which somehow a lot of people feel utterly disconnected from what's going on at the national conference. Do you feel disconnected from what's going on? I don't, because I'm interested. So the only way to I'm, I'm not interested. be disconnected is to be interested? I'm interested because at some point, I'd like to be in a position where I can make decisions uh, in however small a part of Nigeria on how we're going to do things going forward. So of course, yes, I'd like to know what basis uh, what, what's been decided uh, as, as far as, you know, how we're going to be relating with one another and what the rules of engagement are going to be in a unified Nigeria. I think that is an opportunity we must not miss. I think that everybody should pay attention to what's going on there because there are certain things that have sort of crept past. Like, for instance, the, the committee in that national conference on uh, devolution of powers Okay, has recommended that the local government level be scrapped. I think that's stupid. I've never heard of such, such stupidity in my life, okay, that some people would think that the level of government closest to the people should simply vaporize and should be left in the hands of people who we now, who we now know, okay, a level of government we now know that when people get there, they turn into demigods. Okay, I'm running for the governorship of Lagos State under my party, the PDP, and... At the moment, I see the governors, the, 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 the way the constitution is set up. The second most powerful people in Nigeria are the governors. The most powerful person in Nigeria is the president. Okay? He holds sway over everything. Everything. Power of life and death. Or Power of life and say. death, yes, because he controls the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the armed forces. Okay? He's the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, so he has power of life and death. He controls all land. 
under which there are mineral resources. All land under which there are mineral resources. So the people don't have rights to their own minerals. Okay? The governors control all other land. And if you understand that all economic activity is predicated on land, land is the first thing. You want to sell papers, you have to have a space from which to operate. Okay? And the governors, ostensibly, under the Land Use Act, own all the land. They're supposed to hold it in trust. But you know that second part, in trust for the people, they always conveniently discard that mm. and focus on governor's control. Now, these are the issues that perhaps Nigerians need to be focusing on. Because do you know what? In the public interest, we're acquiring your land because you're an opposition member. But it's in the public interest. Okay. Okay. That happens all the time in Nigeria. Now, you talked about the idea that Nigerians ask questions and answers are never given. I can give you an example of that going on in Lagos State right now. SERAP, the Social Economic Rights Agenda Project, asked the Lagos State government for details on how a $90 million World Bank loan for education was spent. Lagos State government refused to provide that information. No, what do you mean so refused? They refused to provide that information under the Freedom of Information Act because they said the Freedom of Informa Information Act does not apply to Lagos State government because it's not been domesticated. Okay? Yet. It's not been domesticated. Yes. Yet. It's not been domesticated. Yet. yet you there is no remember. process of domestication going on. So when you say yet, okay. you, 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 in, you impute, imply that, you imply that perhaps you know, there's a legislative But there's legislative an expectation process. that it will be done you at some point. You cannot live on expectations, my brother. You have to live with reality, what is actually happening. And the fact is nothing, as far as the freedom of information law in Lagos State, nothing is happening. Okay? Now, Lagos States are hiding behind their finger and saying that because that freedom of information law has not been domesticated in Lagos State, that they will not, they will not tell us how they spent a $90 million loan, which future generations are going to have to pay, okay? And it comes back to the, the, to, to the statement that Oscar made, that we are not persistent enough. Now, the media has conveniently just swept that issue under the carpet. We come back to the same old issue And we're not, of... we're not actually focusing on these issues as they affect us. Now, because that $90 million is gone now, Lasso students, have to pay th up to 350,000 naira per annum in school fees. This is in a state where the least paid civil servants earn less than 13,000 naira a month. This means that these guys cannot send their children to a university that was established in the first place to take care of people who could not ordinarily afford to educate their children. So where are we going? What are we doing? But you know that education is not cheap, and, and is it? Uh, excuse me? You know that education is that not cheap That may be true, anywhere. but perhaps you want to visit Singapore and Germany, where mm. education up to first degree level is free. Mm. It's free. It's not or, cheap. But if you were Somebody going to study... Somebody has to pay for it. If you're going to study in Singapore, yes. you're not going to get it for free, are you? Well, if I'm going, I, yes. a non-Singaporean, Yes. Okay. If I were to go to Singapore, of course I would expect to pay those people, those taxpayers that are funding uh, their educational system. I would expect and to you're aware pay them that for it. The government of but this, but Singaporeans, Singaporeans do not pay no, for education they in pay their country. They pay through their tax, don't they? Well, Lagosians are paying taxes. They've uh, never stopped paying taxes. Uh, that's Ta what taxation is not a new thing in Lagos. Ever since Lagos was established in 1967. People have been paying taxes. My parents paid taxes. I remember uh, recently the current governor of Lagos State went to inspect some projects in Ikorodu, and there he made an, a really unfortunate retort where he said that, well, we could have done more in Ikorodu, but, you know, Ikorodu people don't pay taxes. I was particularly yeah, annoyed uh, by that because, that wait a minute, it's this is, this is the city that produced people like from. Bobby Benson, produced people okay. like Adina you know we, we <laughs>
people that are aspiring to lead. Uh, okay. Well, okay, we will have to move on, but I guess the Lagos State government will at have some to point respond to, respond to that because they're not here to defend. We really hope so. We cannot touch on that.